All day here on News 5, we have been focusing on the fentanyl crisis and the rising number of people who have died from ingesting fentanyl-laced drugs. Well, following up for you tonight, School District 11 in the spring speaking out about one student's deadly overdose back in December. A Colorado Springs woman now facing charges accused of distributing the drugs that led to her death. It's a problem recovery groups in town say is their number one enemy right now. News 5's Natalie Chuck live with us in studio breaking down the details of this case and how they're trying to help. Natalie? Well, Rob, the suspect, Alexis Nicole Wilkins, could serve anywhere from 20 years to life in prison if found guilty of selling Percocet laced with fentanyl to high school girls. But District 11 tells me no amount of time served will make up for the loss of one of their kids. If we could reverse time. I think all of us would want to do that. Reverse back to before December 3rd, 2021, when a student in District 11 lost her life too soon. Fentanyl is so potent and so dangerous. Like I said, one pill can kill, which was the situation that we saw um, just not too long ago with one of our students at Mitchell. An affidavit says three students at Mitchell High School went to the girls' bathroom and at least two of them snorted what they believed were Percocets. Law enforcement believes the pills were purchased here less than a mile down the road from the school at the Citadel Mall. When I started reading uh, just how dangerous it really is and how it impacts kids and how they're able to have access to it and how easy it is to access, it really made me uh, start to you know, think I gotta have this conversation with my own child. One of the girls eventually began overdosing in class. She was rushed to the hospital where she later died. According to the affidavit, the El Paso County coroner identified fentanyl as the cause of death. The kids that are out here experimenting for the first time, peer pressure, the things that go on in school and stuff, they just don't know the how the magnitude of the situation and how dangerous these drugs are today. Bobby Galindo and Eric Sanders help run the Sanctuary Church, where they work frequently with youth struggling with substance use. I really encourage parents to do the hard thing and have conversations with your kids. Drugs today are nothing like they were back in the 60s and the 70s. They are so much more potent. The district says they've discussed precautionary measures like more security, but believe conversations with kids are more successful in preventing drug use. Ultimately, uh, you know, high school is high school and, and sadly these types of situations take place these days. Um, but, you know, the more that we're aware of the situation and the more that we're trained on how to address it, um, we've actually seen more uh, positive outcomes using things like restorative practices. And the Sanctuary Church says it boils down to finding out why students are turning to substance abuse. Is there another way that we can entertain you without the danger? Is there another way we can help you cope with your pain without the risk? Is there something else going on? One thing the Sanctuary Church wants to reiterate is that there are testing strips out there. The strips of paper can detect fentanyl in any batch of drugs, and they are available at local harm reduction agencies. We will have a list of where you can find them on KOAA.com. Rob. Natalie, thanks. A reminder that School District 11 has launched a social media campaign, Fake and Fatal, to educate parents and students alike on the threat that fentanyl and other opioids present. We have a link at KOA.com. Also, District 11 is one of several Southern Colorado school districts, including D60 in Pueblo, Districts 38, 2, and 20 in El Paso County, that now carry life-saving Narcan to counteract an overdose. We also spoke with local doctors today who told us that the post